This is Bob Payne, Chief Investment Strategist here at Payne Capital Management with this week's market update. This week on the Street of Dreams, all three of the major averages closed higher. The Dow finished up 6.2% for the week and snapped its longest losing streak since 1923. The S&P 500 was up 6.5% for the week, and the NASDAQ is up 6.8% uh, from last week's big debacle. Both indices ended seven-week losing streaks. A chunk of the week's gains came Thursday and Friday when all three of the averages rallied as strong retail earnings and a slowing inflation report lifted investor sentiment. Now, the PCE, the Core Personal Consumption Expenditures Price Index, rose 4.9% in April. Now, that's down from the 5.2% pace seen in the previous month. This is the Fed's preferred report on inflation and is watched very closely by the Federal Reserve when setting policy. For months, worries about high inflation and the path of interest rates have weighed on the market. Investors have grown concerned that interest rate hikes could tip the economy into a downturn. Fears of that worst-case scenario appear to evaporate this week as stops kept rising after the Fed's latest meeting minutes showed the central bank thought they would only need to raise interest rates by a half of 1% at each of the next two meetings. The indices continued to build on these gains later in the week and surged this past Friday, ending the session on the highs for the week. Still, the averages are well off their all-time highs that were set this past January. The NASDAQ is still solidly in bear market territory, down 25% from its record high, while the S&P and Dow are still in corrective territory off 13 and 10% respectively. Now, not everything is down this year. There's a bull market in commodities, up 33% year to date, and everything oil related with stocks like energy pipelines, for example, up 28% year to date. And value stocks are only down slightly, and in some cases, are actually up for the year and will pay their quarterly dividend next month. So concerns about economic growth is also driving government bond yields lower. The yield on the U.S. 10-year Treasury dropped to 2.7% and has fallen now for three consecutive weeks. However, few of the fundamental headwinds that have sent stocks falling this year have changed. Federal Reserve is still on course to continue lifting short-term interest rates. Meanwhile, COVID-19 lockdowns in China and the war in Ukraine continue to exacerbate the supply chain issue. The number one question on the mind of my clients has been, is this the bottom? Well, no one knows. I'm still firmly in the correction camp and believe we are in simply in a process of repricing assets to higher interest rates and higher inflation. So take a deep breath. Stocks have spent the past five months pricing inflation fears and expectations are quite low today. Once that fear works its way through, markets should resume weighing reality against those expectations and it won't take much in the way of a positive surprise to help fuel the strong bounce back to new highs that have always, in history, followed every correction. Hey, my son, Ryan, and I, we have 70 years of combined industry experience of building low-cost, tax-efficient, goal-based portfolios. For your free evaluation, all you need to do is text or call us at 844-752-6692. That's 844-752-6692, or just simply call 844 844- Plan NYC. That's 844-PLAN-NYC. Hey, this is Bob Payne. I'm the Chief Investment Strategist here at Payne Capital Management.